Go left, 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 go
The side-by-side -side community is an ever-expanding endeavor. It's the fastest growing class in the best of the desert race series. And what's so important to me is that I race against the best. And I like racing that way. I want to race against trophy trucks when we come out here because I just want to, we want to pit ourselves against the best. Best in the Desert also offers opportunities for motorcycles and ATV enthusiasts to have the chance to compete in the country's longest off-road race. Pretty pumped, just trying to relax and, and hydrate and take it all in. It's a little crazy around here, but uh, a lot of fun. And... The S3 racing team has decided to branch out. They have grown their Desert Race team to now two Can-Am Maverick Turbos and one Can-Am Renegade. Experienced ATV racer Chris Robinson is at the helm, and he's ready to try to Ironman the 545-mile race. I've raced it a couple times team races, and my longest section was about 220, so this will be a 545 will be a little bit of a challenge, but I think we'll be all right. One word to describe this race would be marathon. Going from mud racing in the south to desert racing in the west has been a bit of a transition for the S3 race team. What you want, where you want to end. Sometimes we just don't know what to do with them. Then having a win at the prestigious Mint 400 under their belt, new doors have opened up for the team. Oh, we're doing a photo shoot for UTV Sports Magazine. Um, checking out this awesome car from S3 racing. This is prior to the snap. Hey, this is at the snap. Prior, after, prior, after. <laughs> Even if it's a bit awkward. Yeah. Having a good time, man. Getting to, getting to do some fun stuff. It's, it goes along with the winning race, I guess. First time it's ever happened to us, so it's, it's exciting. After making the 20 plus hour drive to Phoenix, the S3 race team are starting to go a little stir crazy, and they are ready to have some fun. Hey, we're going to the go kart What? Let's go. Let's go racing, man. I got the power mullet. It's sprouted, man. You start, I'm talking about it. It does look real. Heck yeah. <laughs> Brought the whole crew up here. They're all acting up. They've been in the trucks for 30 something hours. It's the power of the mullet. It's not just it's not a hairstyle, it's a lifestyle, bro. So we show up and it's usually a little imposing, a little overwhelming. Come on, bring your mullet over here. <laughs> That's never gonna happen. <laughs> it's pretty funny. <laughs> Great sense of humor. This is freaking out. I don't think they knew what to expect when they brought this in, us in this place. And finally letting us out, it's like letting a wild animal out the zoo. They go crazy when it's that time. With having the first taste of the glamour side of desert racing comes the realization of the S3 race team's impact on the sport. It's humbling to see people actually follow us because we're a bunch of country boys. You know, that's all we are, is a bunch of nobodies. Everybody's been really nice to us and really helpful and really cordial, but we're trying to find our place in the, in the race community out there. We do it because we love it, and that's the only reason. And when we see people kind of uh, follow us and support us, it is the most humbling feeling in the world. Just outside of Beatty, Nevada, the S3 race team have made it to the start line, and they are getting ready for tomorrow's grueling 545-mile race. Oh, this is nice. I didn't know what to expect beautiful mountains and the start line is just right out the entrance here. After a long day at vehicle tech and contingency, the S3 race team is eager to load the chase trucks and get the opportunity for a good night's rest before the motorcycles and ATVs take off at 5 in the morning. Look, the, this thing doesn't lock, it just likes to hang right here. So you just gotta hit it sometimes. Matter of fact, what? You hit that right there? Yes. Man, we've been game planning. We've been trying to set tools out and, and prepackage all of our tool kits and all that stuff so we're prepared for whenever something does happen. Like every desert race so far in the season, the S3 racing pit crew is on a volunteer basis, which means new faces every race. They're good. I mean, they've all been around UTVs, raced UTVs. They can work on the cars, you know. We're chasing 95, okay? The trucks can only hit one pit past 10. Um, I can tell that they're nervous, but they're they're excited, they're driven, they're ready to do this. And that's what kind of people that we that we try to bring with us, people that are pumped up about what they're about to get to do and the experience that they're about to have. So it's a good thing. Race day in Nevada. Teams ready their trucks, buggies, and side-by-sides for the start of the grueling 545-mile straight line race. We're gonna push a little harder than we normally do. We had to make sure we conserved the car because this was literally the longest race we'd ever ran. In order for the S3 race team to be competitive amongst the elite desert drivers of North America, a good game plan is a must. Got a good feeling about this race. Hope it's gonna work out good for everybody. 
it's a long day. Yeah. This is definitely the longest race for us, and we've got to treat it even more like a marathon than what we have in the previous desert races. For Mr. Mal, the Vegas Torino race will be his first opportunity to spend an extended amount of time with his new co-driver, Quentin Daniels. We're going to take it easy, probably the first 40 miles, you know, run about 60% or so, let him get comfortable with the car. And... Roads elevated, you know there's not going to be a washout. You go down a hill and it's a straight road and you're, everything's higher above you, you better look ahead looking for washouts. And you don't know how someone's going to do. Do you actually stick them in that car and go race it in the desert. Mr. Mal decides to ease into the race to let Quentin get his feet wet. Dustin and Shane, on the other hand, start 38th off the line with one thing on their minds. My game plan was to run fast, really keep a consistent pace, and just make a run for the front. To get to the front of their field, Dustin and Shane must successfully pass 37 of the best UTB endurance racers in the country then hope that they don't push their Can-Am Maverick Turbo past its breaking point. Remember race our race? Okay. Um, we did well at the man. I think a lot of people chalk that up as a fluke because us getting lucky. But doing well at the Vegas Torino would solidify that, you know, we can race. Like I always say, we do it for fun, but not only do we do it for fun, we want to be competitive. Here we go. Straight. We belong out here racing. We can build a fast car. We can build a good suspension. There's our hard left. Watch him. Watch him. Hard left right here. Hard left right here. Okay. Once we feel like we don't need to test ourselves and push ourselves, we need to hang it up. And coming up 200 feet, there's going to be a hard right. Look at his lights. Slow it down. Do you run it? No. Told you. We started near the end of the pack, and so we had a long way to push and, and a whole bunch of cars to try to compete with, and these guys are super fast. Good. Okay. We're driving a little bit hard from the beginning of the race, bud. Starting the race in 38th position, Dustin and Shane race quickly towards the front. Meanwhile, five miles back at the starting line, Mr. Mal and Quentin line up and anxiously wait for the start of the race. Biggest challenge, Vegas Torino was going to be keep the car in one piece. You make one blunder and tear something off, you're out of the race. Right from the start, Mr. Mal notices something is wrong with his Can-Am Maverick Turbo. Car it up. You ready? Yep. Yeah. just been loaded up with fuel. I stomped the accelerator at the starting line. It fell on its face. Oh, it's dead at low RPM. I don't know what's going on with it. I'd have to pedal the accelerator to get the RPM up to like 4,500 and then it'd just light up, it'd come on. It's on the floor. Uh, all right. wake up, all right? Good. Yeah, it'll be all right. Even though Mr. Mal's Can-Am Maverick Turbo is slow to accelerate, it still hits top speeds. Co-driver Quentin Daniels gets his first taste of desert racing. He was bracing himself on that stuff. And I said, no, man, <laughs> you just gotta relax in that car. Come on, baby. Mr. Mal and Quentin are making good time. The Can-Am Maverick Turbo may be slow to take off, but they have no problems passing other teams. Go ahead, that's fine. They are finding their rhythm and enjoying the ride. Eight miles ahead, Dustin and Shane's game plan works flawlessly as they move towards the front of the pack. Okay, you just dust, get up on him. Keep on going straight. Follow his lights. Okay, pass to the left. Be hard left, hard left. Shut her down. But with a hard push in their Can-Am Maverick Turbo and miserable August heat, Dustin and Shane risk overheating their motor. Motor temperature, 
Hot. Slow it down. Motor okay. tips on. Right. Watch out, Rock. Like hot, hot, hot. Like when you yes, like when you need to chill out for a little bit. Just don't be smashing on it. We had some major, major issues for the first 60, 70 miles of it running hot. So we would push the Maverick kind of hard and then it would get up in temperature, then we would back down. This race is slow with this motor going off. Okay. Finding the line between keeping their UTV slow enough not to destroy it, yet fast enough to win, is an inner battle that all teams must fight. You my ball. There he goes. Dustin and Shane are racing across the Nevada desert like they have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Bell tips are good. Whoa. The question is, will their strategy work? Mr. Mal and Quentin are racing steady and keeping a great pace. All right. <laughs> right, right. Despite the low RPM issue, Mr. Mal and Quentin head to the front of their class. In order to take the top position, they face two obstacles. Competing with other teams, Tending with brutal silt beds left from the trophy trucks and buggies. I figured out that silt. You, you need to get going about 60 miles an hour and just blast through it. Sometimes I catch you off guard. Come over a rise or something, and you're really rolling. You can be in it before you know it. Now you're good, now hit the brakes, that's the best thing. Yeah, down, down, we're good. We're doing good, let's do the same thing there. Yeah. While Mr. Mal and Quentin push their Can-Am Maverick Turbo across the Nevada desert, at pit three, teams ready their chase trucks for a quick fuel stop or to repair their damaged vehicle. The S3 pit crew patiently waits for both Can-Am Maverick Turbos. Having a good day so far, hope it holds out. Waiting for uh, both teams to run it about eight, 10 minutes apart. And so far, both cars are doing well. Mal's uh, leading his group. Dustin's made up a uh, pass by over half the field so far in the first 90 miles of the race. We're waiting for him. The chase crew faces the challenge of getting both cars in and out of the pit without any hiccups and as fast as possible. We're about 50 yards on the top, guys. Do we need gas? Top us off. Pop us off! Get somebody get a gas can in their hand. Hey, dump water on that radiator. Hey, water on the radiator, please. When's the next pit? How far? Water on the radiator. Put water on the radiator. Water dump, on the radiator. Dump, dump, dump. In the middle. To try to cool down the overheating motor, part of the crew douses the radiator with bottled water, while others check for any mechanical issues. Let me out. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Dustin and Shane are out on the move again without any issues. We gotta go to pit bull. We gotta get on the pit bull. We ain't got time to go. 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 Grab y'all stuff. We'll clean up. Now the crew gets ready for Mr. Mal and Quentin. Oh, like you got a copy? Mr. Mal should be close enough to the pit for the radios to reach. You got a copy? We're good. This is Shane. What y'all got, Miss Linda? The only response is from Dustin and Shane, which can only mean one thing. Mr. Mal is out of his vehicle. Yeah, we were uh, we were leading, and you know, sitting there. Okay, uh, you know, maybe this will be the day. The injectors on Mr. Mal's Can-Am Maverick Turbo have failed yet again. What was actually happening? The gasoline was turning into a gaseous state, and it's not a solid fluid going through the injector. Well, you got an O2 sensor that senses a lean burn in the cylinder, and so it opens the injector up even more. And in which case, after a while, the injector just burns up. While stranded one more time in the Nevada desert, Mr. Mal thinks about the future. At some point, you just kind of back up and go, that's enough. Uh, you ready? Okay. I'll be all right, we're gonna take it easy. 
After changing the injectors, Mr. Mallon Quinton get back on the track and head to the pits in hopes of being ready for the next race. Meanwhile, Dustin and Shane are still in the race. They have pushed their Can-Am Maverick Turbo as hard as they can, and now they are running with the leaders. We must be doing good. Let's just keep that space in. Yeah. And when we started passing people, I, honestly, I, the pace is so fast, and you've got so much going on, you don't have time to think about that. Can we slow down a little bit? No, I want you to keep going. The motor's cooling down. Just don't smash out. Just do what you're doing right now, because we're maintaining. We were racing for first physical position. Uh, at the time, we didn't know that. We just knew that we were we were catching up to uh, Craig Scanlon, and so we were more excited about that than anything. That's Craig Scanlon. Run him down while we can. We got a long straight, and the wind's in our favor. Very talented racer. He's been racing for a long time, and we started catching up to him. Um, he really turned it up. Okay, it's going to be a medium left coming up. Okay, to see I where it is. Yes. Dustin and Shane just unknowingly moved into first physical position. See back in the group. Medium right. Just do it. Just drive smart and slow. Okay. Now the challenge is going to be staying there. At pit seven, the S3 racing chase crew readies for a quick fueling stop. Waiting on Dustin to roll in. He's about, what, six, six, seven miles out. Pit number seven. The S3 crew is the first of the UTV class. Well, until... Looks like it's Jagged X, part of uh, Craig Scanlon's pit crew. And then it's time for a little friendly banner. Slow that thing down. Hey, 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 hey. hey, hey, hey. Only way y'all following us on Instagram. I am tired of you. I'm going to unfollow you. <laughs> The pit crews and stuff knew what was going on, that Craig and I were battling it out for first physical position. You guys just got around us. Not only successful, but they've proven to be the best. To get any bit of acknowledgement from them is a huge sign of respect. There you guys are. Get some waters, get some waters, let's go. Take your time, on, take your time. We're all there for the same thing, and, and we can have a good time as we race together. You need to go over everything. I would tighten the lug nuts, because they come loose all the time. While Dustin and Shane fuel up, the 1931 Jagged X UTV doesn't stop. And Jagged X team owner Craig Scanlon helps the now second place team. Despite surrendering first place to Jagged X, the S3 race team can't help but to feel more accepted by the desert racing UTV community. A completely different team for a completely different manufacturer, and we had a good time battling with these guys on the track and, uh, and our pit crews going back and forth in the pit. Amongst the elite drivers and teams, S3 racing has made a statement. They came to race. Stay to the right, to the right, right there, stay right there, now hammer down. I wanted to prove to myself that I belong, that I can drive with the best in the country. And the only way that you're going to be the best is to beat the best, and so I want to line up with those guys. For the next 100 miles, Dustin and Shane battled back and forth with the Jagged X team for first physical position. We had a great battle with them, it was really fun, but it was back and forth. We passed them and they would pass us. My goal for this race was to make that push just to see if I belong in this caliber of race. The overwhelming push from both teams put them 20 minutes in front of the field. Whichever team keeps their car together the longest could possibly be able to coast to the finish line. Back there. No, not even close, and then the Jagged X UTV stops on the track. Look back and see if you see any more UTVs. Dude, we've, we've done good. We just got to bring it home and take it easy now. Yeah. Dustin and Shane take over sole position of first place, with just under 200 miles left in the race. 
You know, we had pushed uh, push hard to get up to the front. Uh, we were trying to keep our pace. We need to cut it back just a notch. I'm not saying you drive fast, but we just need to keep that in our head because we're winning. Okay. So we wanted to race smart. We just wanted to take the take the ride in on home, hopefully not have any issues, and we were we were hoping for a win. With the day turning into evening, a long, hard endurance race goes from grueling to nearly insane. Teams muster what little they have left in the tank and prepare to finish the final leg of the Vegas to Reno race in the dark. For Dustin and Shane, not only is it about winning the race, but also about preservation. When you start seeing the sun go down and it starts getting dark outside and you realize, you know, I've been in this car since 10 o'clock this morning and your mind starts to lose focus and it's, so it's hard to do the same thing for that amount of time and everything starts looking the same. Your mind loses focus and, and Shane's words start running together. Worried about where we're going, what calls I need to give him, what the gauges look like, what the temps are running, you know, fuel pressure, all that. It's exhausting, it takes a toll on your body, you lose a focus and um, stuff starts turning into a blur. The stage is set for the last 100 miles of the gut-wrenching 545-mile marathon. For Dustin and Shane to pull off a victory, they will have to fight the most brutally challenging part of the course in the dark. They told us at the driver's meeting, they said in between pit 12 and 13 is going to be miserable. There was terrible washouts that would, would claim a car, and so we planned accordingly. Three to four foot deep ditches that were two to three feet wide. I don't know what the crap to do, do you? There's no, you're doing what you can do. Oh, there. Good thing we didn't G out. God, oh, good. And we got to jump this washout where it just so happens to be a rock that a trophy truck had kicked up on the other side of the washout. What is that? I don't know. Better like it's coming from the back. At the time, we, we just kept pushing the car. Um, just kept our pace. We didn't know what had happened, but we start hearing some whining noise and it sounded like a bearing failure. We had wishful thinking. We was hoping it was the diff and we were hoping it was other things, but it was the transmission. At the final pit of the race, pit 13, the S3 chase team gets ready to top off fuel one last time. When Dustin and Shane pull in with their beaten and battered Can-Am Maverick Turbo. When we pull in the pits and we get out the car and we see that the drain plug is broken off, basically we'd ran for 30 miles with no fluid in the transmission. A perfectly placed rock broke off the transmission drain plug. The question isn't will it lock up, it's just a matter of when. What do you guys need? The Murray Brothers race team offers their spare Maverick transmission to help keep S3 in the race. Let's do this, help you get there. Dustin wanted to change it. Uh, the Murrays are willing to share one of their spare stock transmissions. And I didn't want to change it. I either wanted to go for the win or nothing. I think, I think if we, we put fresh fluid, it, fresh fluid yeah, we I can make it. Wash it and just back down. Or we can try to plug this hole, top the transmission off with oil, and run the last 50 or 60 miles to the finish line. Hammer and a five bar. There's the hammer. I wanted to go for a win. We weren't, we're not chasing points. We're not in the points chase, so it didn't matter to me. All right, I got your tough on tape right here if you want some. Tough on tape. What do you want me to wrap? It's checkers or wreckers, man. It's, it's time to choose. He said, we can fill this thing up and try to make it to the finish line and be heroes. He said, or we may leave a strand in the middle of the desert and we'd be zeros. Hey, somebody get a ratchet with a 13, please. We found another drain plug, put one in there, thread it in there as best we could because some of the threads were broken off. We filled the transmission up. Justin, start it up. Is this your night? We weren't going out there to just finish a race. We were going out there to win a race. And so, we were gonna do what we thought was the best thing to do in order for us to win the race at the end of the day. That was awesome. All right, boys, <laughs> now we're gonna need a little prayer. Plugged it off and we've refilled the transmission fluid and we got 75 miles to go. We're gonna bring it home. They didn't come out here not to. Got them going, they're in the lead. So hopefully it holds together. It's gonna to be a uh, pins and needle event till they get to the finish. Made it to the finish line. Nobody remembers the losers. Everybody remembers the winners. This car 1978, does anybody have a copy? This is 1978, best in the desert. Does anyone have a copy?
At the finish line, teams trickle in from a long, brutally hard journey across the state of Nevada. You could see the lights over the mountain. We stopped in a valley, and I could see the finish line lights over the top of the mountain. It wasn't good, I'll tell you that. It wasn't the best feeling in the world, but it's racing. You know, you've got to take the good with the bad. 19 miles from the finish line, the transmission locks up. Dustin and Shane are out of the race. And we had to sit there all night watching racers go by. We were in physical first position, so we watched every single racer drive by us. Dustin and Shane broke down in a remote part of the track, and they are stuck until the track closes. There's no road in or out. Can we go get the guys? No road. Casey said no road. I was heartbroken for them, and then we couldn't go get them. They had to spend the night in the desert because the race was still going and there was only one way to get to them and that was up the racetrack. Forced to wait until the crew can come get them, Dustin and Shane spend the night in the desert. We just drove 12 miles of the race course to come get the guys and we're about a mile from them right now. I bet they can see us down there, happy to see us. I would, I would be lying to you if I didn't, told you I didn't shed a little tear that night while we was laying in that cold desert. Back at the starting line, the S3 race team patiently waits for the guys to get back so they can load up and head home. Yeah, I'm proud of what the guys have done. It's a team effort. It's not just a driver. It's not just a co-driver. We woke up this morning on the belt box. Tim Gage said 41. It was cold. The, the whole group as a team has come together. We've learned a lot as a group. Hey, hey sir. Good run. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah? I'm sorry. For what? I think that we had that race sewed up. I hope we made a statement. Oh, yeah. Trust me. You know, even though we didn't win this race, we proved that we not only can be competitive, but we can be a, a, somebody you have to worry about. I told Shane, man, this morning when we were sitting out in the middle of the desert watching the sun come up, I said, man, you realize we just outran the fastest people in the country? So I wouldn't be hanging my head down. You know what, looking back on it, I don't think I would have changed anything. I wouldn't have swapped that transmission in the pit. I agree with Shane's decision on, on running it. Um, now we gotta uh, get cleaned up, uh, start making a, making a drive back home on Sunday so everybody can go to work on Monday. As the team packs up to head back to Louisiana, they notice that something is a little bit different on their chase truck. Do you see this? Do you know anything about this? <laughs> Are you serious right now? <laughs> The Jagged X team left them a little memento to remember the Vegas Torino battle. Yeah, they're super nice. Man. When I reflect back on this race, uh, my focus is not breaking down 19 miles from the finish. It's the camaraderie of our groups, it's the acceptance from the other race teams, it's the hard work all of our guys put in. I guess that's one thing that makes S3 racing, you know, the team that it is. We don't give up. It's all positive. It was, uh, it was a great experience and it was a fun race. Oh! <laughs>